Baby, it's cold outside. But the topics are red hot, and we've got an entire show of them. Bannon bombshells. The explosive allegations from the former White House advisor that have the president furiously claim Bannon's lost his mind. Lower than Lauer. Hoda Kotb spilling Matt Lauer's anchor chair. So how come she's making millions less than he did? And do you, HQ? The new trivia app obsession that has users making money and totally losing it. <laughs> Plus, Greta Van Susteren's our special guest co-host. Let's light up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Joy Behar, Sunny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. Today, please welcome our friend and author of the book, Everything You Need to Know About Social Media Without Having to Call a Kid. <laughs> Red Van Suster. Thank you. <laughs> and there is <laughs> another book oh, yeah. that we're going to be talking about. The reason everyone is sitting like this is because this book has come out and everybody's head has exploded. Yes. It's called Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf, who had full access to you know who's campaign and his first year in the White House. And even though they now say everything in the book is a lie, <laughs> the White House has already put out a cease and desist order to the man who dropped some of the biggest bombshells, President Steve Bannon. <laughs> Any thoughts, my friends, on why? On why what? Why, 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 why any of it? Why? why? Well, there's a cease and desist because probably a lot of it is true. As some of the pundits said, even if it's not 100% true, the spirit of it is true. Mm -hmm. right. I, I, and I, everything that's in that book, we have been saying for a whole year. I'm just saying. Well, and I, if you look I, at I the... back up first, though, say, so who in his right mind let a, a writer into the White House and no. sit there and listen for a journalist? I mean, that was insane. Well, they're yeah, not yeah. that bright. He had a lot of access, but what was interesting to me about the cease and desist letter, they say um, that there was sort of this non-disparagement agreement between, I guess, Bannon and, and the White House. And he also says that in some cases, there were outright defamatory statements made. So not in all cases, but in some, in some cases. cases. And well, that's, that's a, you know, that's a legal significant. standard. That's a legal standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the non-disparagement clauses, I mean, probably all our contracts have had them, right? Mm -hmm. Is, that, is it normal to have a non-disparagement clause in, in government? Well, no? I think this, I don't know, if this, I think this went back to the campaign, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know, which when would have been government then. I don't know. They said that Melania cried on election night. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> That night. <laughs> well, we came in this morning and I was, my head really was exploding in our morning meeting. And even last night, I, again, I keep, there's like this period of time between when the show ends and then we come back here and I'm like, oh, it's going to be a slow news day. I'm going to go home and cook and then I'm like, what is going on? What is happening? So I have to tell you, and you know this, Greta, because you're a journalist, the idea of giving any journalist, let alone someone like Michael Wolf, which by the way, he has been described by the Washington Post as Paul Farahi as someone who, quote, pushes the facts as far as they'll go and sometimes further than they can tolerate. <laughs> giving him the kind of access where he is shadowing the president, talking to the top staffers for 18 months is not only <laughs> unprecedented, but it is suicide and insanity. The only thing that I can come up with right now is that Steve Bannon is trying to take Trump out from the inside. That's the only thing that I can come up with because Steve Bannon is only all in for Steve Bannon. If I were teaching a political science class to a bunch of students saying, okay, Grade one, let me tell you this. Access is the number one currency you have to play. Yeah. Keep it as close to you as possible. Do not don't let do journalists this. around you in this kind of faction. I don't understand it. It is beyond my comprehension. Maybe he thought it was going to be complimentary, but what was interesting to me about what Bannon said <laughs> Just was... Just what, 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 what he said, honestly, sorry to interrupt you, Sunny. It was like letting the fox into the hen house. Yeah, I think well, that sums it up yeah. concisely. I think what's, what's very interesting and I think maybe most damaging to this presidency is that Bannon said that two 
2016 Trump Tower meeting between the Trump campaign officials and a Russian lawyer was uh, treasonous. Yeah. He also said that they would crack Donald Trump Jr. like an egg. And he also said that he'd be shocked, and I'm paraphrasing here, that Donald Trump did not meet with uh, the Russians in the in and the, a couple, Trump couple, Tower. A couple first things. That's that, a problem. Let me, let me play lawyer for just a second. Um, I play it every day. I know you play it every day. <laughs> and you play it very well, probably much mm -hmm. better than I do, is that you know we, we have obviously gotten the electrifying statements from the publisher because to promote the buzz to sell sure. the book. I don't know what else is in the book. Um, the things that Steve Bannon says is like it's treasonous. That would they you know we don't know in what context or what his opinion is. Obviously, all this is electrifying and has lit all of us on fire. Is lit well, probably lit, yeah. but, but treason. Right, that's treason. Treason. No, no, that, yeah. to be no, no. no. Uh, but I mean, you know, I mean, I, an I don't, impeachable offense. You know, no, no, I, I understand that. But I mean, I have I use loosely you know words too that I regret later. I, I have no idea. But I'm just saying is that I want to read the whole book. Good. Well, you we'll know. read it next week. But you know. A lot of the things, a lot of the things in the book make a lot of sense. For example, the guy never gives a press conference. Trump. We never see him. We never see him interviewed. He uh, he said no to 60 minutes because he doesn't know what you're going to ask him, and he doesn't have the answers. Yeah. So he goes to his pal Sean Hannity who's been trashing me, by the way. So let's discuss Sean Hannity yeah. for a second. Sean well, Hannity... One thing that Sean, Sean, is, my, Sean is, was my, is my friend. I, I worked with him for years. I don't Full disclosure. No, no, I'm just... Oh. Full disclosure. I know you guys. I know you guys. I know you guys. I know you guys. Okay. My thought is And I'm not in favor of him trashing you or you trashing him, just as a side. But he is the one that would give Trump the questions ahead of time. He yes. did? Now how much yes, Kool-Aid has it's Sean alleged. Hannity no. drunk before he drowns and is that, the question. And that is I something, had. Greta, you know but, that but journalists typically do not them. do. No, no, I, Why should not? I, I, you I just, don't you know just gave Sean Hannity his clip tonight. Like that's the thing about this is it's not about But I don't care about Sean Hannity. I care about the fact that we have a collaborator. Could I finish my thought now? He's a collaborator. When you have journalists Running Where's around the White House in Manners this capacity, fighting now. but you, when you have no, journalists but... running around in this capacity, <laughs> absolutely unhinged, which we saw with Omarosa as well, that there's just journalists running rampant that no one knows about, doing off the record and on the record interviews. There are national security <laughs> secrets that could possibly be said that journalists now just apparently have all access to at all times. It's insanity, and I think it's a national security risk, which I care much well, more the, about than the national security, security risk. But whose fault is that, though? Yes, well, I agree, but that's the thing. But it's so much more. There's so here's, here's what I like about all of this. Yeah. <laughs> is that you gave somebody all that you gave a journalist yep. all this access. Mm -hmm. You hate journalists, yep. apparently, because they only tell lies. According to him. Well, that's what that's mm -hmm. my point. I yeah. think he probably thought it was gonna be favorable, though. Well, don't you I, think? I, 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 I don't know what he was thinking. I just know that this is a person who can level crappy things towards people but can't take it when somebody says something well, crappy that's about him. It's yeah. a typical so, bully. Well, it is a typical bully. Mm -hmm. And so what is really kind of wonderful is that <laughs> uh, the new guy keeps saying, well, basically this is what he's saying. I have no idea who that man is. I've never seen him. He has nothing to do with my Bannon, presidency. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't record know where interviews. he came. I don't know who he Who is he? Yeah. That's what basically, because when you get your lawyers to threaten people, that's what you're basically saying. And you come out and you say, well, I didn't, I, I, my, pre I, my presidency acted by myself. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, one of my favorite things in the, the book White is House. that Jared and Ivanka decided, according to this book, that she would be the first woman president. I said, so she'll have Imelda Marcos as her cabinet secretary. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that um, Ivanka is qualified to do. Well, I, you know, I what? would like to know. Why are you looking at me? Uh, Why would she turn to look at me? You don't want to be a journalist. I I'm, I'm the, I thought I was the lawyer. I was, I was hanging out with Sonia. Okay, the lawyer, <laughs> the lawyer <laughs> side. Megan's going to call me a journalist. Why do you think that anybody thinks I've been that called she's... more names okay. since I've been here. Why do you think? <laughs> Why do you think anybody thinks that Ivanka's qualified to be president? Because he's exactly. married to her. That's why he thinks she, she's qualified. Because they have baby to the uh, pillow talk. That's the only so reason. It's like, it's like the, uh, the royal family and Jared? Charles get well, no, 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 no. Look, what? here it is. They have incredible hubris. We know this. Right. 
Mm. There was, why wouldn't you think she was qualified? Why wouldn't she think she was qualified? She yeah. thought she was qualified to be in the White House, to mm -hmm. be the person that the dad I'm, went to. And, and the boy has been, the man, the Jared has been sent to the Middle East to solve the Middle East problem. Come along. Why I, do you, are I, you surprised? They, they, yeah. they, 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 <laughs> To that point, before I said, well, let me just ask him. With the, with the question, Wait, I have to stop everybody. I'm going to go and come back and talk about this some more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Later, the party's over. When more teens are skipping the big night out to stay in and cruise social media, should parents be happy about this? See you, 2017. Bye bye. And hello, New Year and new views. This new year, look who's getting their view on. Drum roll, please. Ashley, Wendy, Meredith, Catherine, Rob, Jordan, plus Rose McGowan on sexual harassment in Hollywood. And when it comes to fearless women, look no further. And oh, did we mention Sarah just had a baby? Wow! So tomorrow, Niecy Nash steps into co-host. Oh yeah, the topics will be hot. Right? New year, new Prestige cream. Uh, welcome back. Well, we left a few seconds ago. We were talking about uh, this new book that's uh, coming out with some really interesting claims from inside the White House called Fire and Fury. And apparently nobody thought that the guy was actually going to win the election. Right. That's one of the things that they said. And the other thing was that uh, his daughter... Uh, felt she was qualified to be the first uh, female president. And I think you, I, I cut you off when you were about to say something about No, uh -huh. if she's qualified to be president, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all right. Just we're saying, all right. if it only takes your dad being a famous politician. Yeah. And again, she is a businesswoman and all these things. Right. But, you know, I, I think that I, I, we are Americans and we don't have a dynasty on purpose. And I think especially in this specific right. climate of being against so many, the Clintons, the Bushes, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. I think it would be a lot and sort of historically ignorant to think it would be easy just because of your last name. Well, well, she, but historically, we have to she, be the president either. That's well, right. But, but I mean, historically, I mean, I mean, your father was eminently qualified to be president. Yes. He has a, you know, very, in, in, you, has a rich history um, as Vice President Gore did, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. But I think it's fair to say that President Bush 43, who was a governor of Texas, since a little different governorship, mm -hmm. it's sort of a half governorship, didn't have much. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah, and neither yeah. did President Obama had been a state senator and a U.S. senator for a short period of time. So it's not like, you but know... Trump had no government experience. Nothing. No, no, I thought we were talking about Ivanka. Zero. I was talking about Ivanka. I said, you know, we, we, you know it's... It is not, it, you know, we historically think of people having an experience like um, Megan's father and others, but uh, we're seeing more and more different. But, you know, I'm she certainly can run. I would be interested to see her give an interview with anyone other than Fox. Well, you know, we've been saying for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, you can't become president. Well, I guess you can. I'm not, but... You understand, I'm not saying she should run. I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been saying for a long time that I've said it or from year one that one of the reasons he ran is to make more money. I think that that's true. This is yeah. why the emoluments clauses hanging on his head and why he doesn't want anybody to see his tax returns. Mm -hmm. And so running for president raises his profile, gets people to go to his hotels. So he didn't want to win necessarily, he just wanted to make more money. Now he wins and it's like, well, what do he do? Yeah. I can make even more money. But he's going to get caught. <laughs> but, you, you know, know the, go ahead, baby. Uh, uh, another thing about Ivanka, I mean, we've talked about on the show how Ivanka is his favorite child. I mean, it's, he's, she's rumored to be his favorite child. But in this book, uh, Ivanka reportedly jokes frequently about her father's signature comb over. And she says that the unusual color comes from a dye called Just for Men, which her father washes away too quickly out of impatience, resulting in the orange blonde shade. <laughs> How did Trump take that? Like, I, was there a big family meeting the yesterday? Is girl, the, it's part, little girl. the part of this is that I Michael Wolff, the journal, or journalist, gossip journalist, whatever, that he does have a sort of nefarious background. David Carr wrote yeah. in 2008, historically one of the problems with Wolf's omniscience is that while he may know it all, he gets some of it wrong. The Atlantic dubbed him a portraitist who has mastered the art of the suck-up put-down. So you know, Talking about the author of the book right, being right. Some, yeah. being not the most trusted journalist well, in the you know entire what's world. Just let it in. Well, Thousand because... Oh, He's surrounded on. by wow. a lot of people who are not necessarily trustworthy. Jim. Why is this a surprise? 
Come on. But I think the point that Greta was making earlier is that some of we just have to take some of this with a grain of salt. I'm sure, like all things, there's some truth in here and there's some there fiction. Yeah. But the problem is this is self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. You let a fox into the hen house. Okay. You let a journalist shadow you for 18 months in the West Wing with your most trusted advisors and family. It's crazy. Well, this is one of the things that I'm 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 chuckling over. I'm chuckling over a lot of stuff, but uh, he says he. Uh, did 200 interviews and then Sarah Sanders chimed in. She said, so far from what I can tell, 95% of his interactions with officials were all done at the request of Mr. Bannon. Yep. So they are trying to push all of this oh, on to Bannon and negate, which is what he does. You know, he gets caught with his pants down and he says, it wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. It's, I didn't do anything. I, I didn't have, I didn't say, who is this guy sitting on my, <laughs> on the edge of my bed every day? But he was interviewed by <laughs> him too, right? Yes. It appears to us. You know, this I mean, is, it's this kind is a good of crazy. One. It I, uh, there's a passage in the book that says that Trump used to brag that sleeping with your friend's wives makes life worth living. And so he, in pursuing, listen to this, this is good. In pursuing a friend's wife, he would try to persuade the wife that her husband was perhaps not what she thought. Okay. Okay. And then, wait a second, then he would have his secretary ask the husband to stop by his office with the wife secretly listening via speakerphone. Oh my and then, gosh. do you still like having sex with your wife, he'd ask the guy while the wife is on speakerphone? You must have had a better strip than your wife. Uh, Trump would apparently ask friends, uh, tell me about it. I have girls coming in from L.A. at 3 o'clock. We can go upstairs and have a great time. And this is in the book. Now, who knows? I said that I told uh, Greta before during the break, and she said maybe Trump bragged about that. No, no. I said, what, wait, what I said, I asked. She told me about this. I said, yeah. what's the source? Is it directly from Trump, yeah. or is it from someone else saying that Trump is always being the lawyer, looking for the facts? Look, you know, this book is absolutely we electrifying. Think Trump told him. I, I, I have. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know. I have nothing well, to do with this. Well, listen to the access Hollywood tape. That's why would right. that be so I, I, incredulous? I, I, exactly. <laughs> why would that not be true? Wait, because, 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 and I don't, I don't act like this. Stuff. Stuff. It's factually possible that, that he didn't say this, but he. I certainly agree. He said the access Hollywood. I heard sure, it with my heard own ears. Yeah. We heard it with our own ears. You know, but I certainly. You know, this whole book is absolutely electrifying. I worry what the rest of the world thinks as they read about this stuff because they obviously pay very close They've been attention. Watching no, no, they pay no, and you know. And there are a lot of really serious issues. I mean, I find far more, you know, as, as electrifying and salacious. And I, get, I admit I read all this stuff and I'm pulling my hair out looking at this thinking, oh, brother, what's going on at the White House and who let this guy in and, and what's being said. Out. But is that, you know, you've also got the far more <laughs> profoundly more important problem yeah. is Kim Jong-un in North yeah. Korea yeah, and, that, and this Twitter fight over who's got the bigger nuclear button. What? Now that... That is not as electrifying as salacious. Nobody but one piece, Greta, about oh, how crazy the guy is I, and, how, and how corrupt he is and, and how unethical. Dangerous. And how dangerous. So Greta has been covering thing. many administrations, and I've called you a journalist. I hope that's accurate. That's how I've always considered you. But the territories that we are in right now are such intensely uncharted waters that it's difficult even for me as a commentator to come on here and comment on it every day because it does feel like reality television. And what you're talking about globally, how the rest of the world sees us, again, I probably would guess half of this book is true, but the half even of it half is, is true, bad. even, even half, half is bad. bad. Any, of it, okay. Okay. Any a, of it. A quarter is bad. It reflects, on, it reflects very poorly on us. Very poor, like, you know, a quarter of it. How could he possibly recover? Or can he? Well, you know, I said, I said the same thing oh. during the Clinton days when we had that. I mean, look, we were on fire during the Clinton days. We were covering that. Our hair That's was right. on fire every single mm -hmm. day. And we're always talking about constitutional crisis. They're talking about it now. I never thought we could recover. We did. We have a very resilient country. This is worse. Very resilient country. And, and this is noisy and salacious and ugly. And I don't want the world to see it. It's not the nuclear stuff with North Korea. No, but it, it does, it is of a piece. We're absolutely right. This is of a piece because this none of this behavior is in any of our bailiwicks. Truly, this kind of insanity on a daily basis every day. None of us are used to this. And so it's like, well, wait a minute. Now, this, you allowed a man to sit in your house, in your house, in the White House for 18 months. Now, we hear stuff. We've heard stuff from other people and people said this and that. But the... The idea that you let someone be in there. Yeah, how could you be that stupid? How could you, how be, could you be that, that stupid? stupid? Yeah. Why would so, you do well, that? And, the, and, and it goes to, it's the same reason you are foolish enough to say to Kim Jong Il, hey, mine is bigger. Yeah. You know, my my button's bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 
Kim really cares. Because this is a guy who doesn't, he doesn't have any checks and balances. <laughs> he doesn't care about your butt. I will say, when you talk mm. about people like Mitt Romney being insane and binders full of women, it makes you kind of miss for the days of people like Mitt Romney, miss, right? Yeah. I agree. Well, well, miss it, it also you makes know. you miss the days. <laughs> days of a president who acts a presidential like President Obama. It yeah. makes me miss days like that more than one, anything. One more point about how much of the, of the thing is true. I am sure that Michael Wolff has tape. Yeah. He did not just, this is not just flying out of the air. He's got this on tape. Mm -hmm. Every good journalist knows to take it. To take it. I've been so pointed at. <laughs> you are the designated you know survivor today. Okay. <laughs> what is this? This really oh. is Greta's fault. Uh oh, it's a alert! Video. What is it? You? Is this what? Is this what you want me to do? Uh, the White House is uh, slamming Ben and saying he's lost his mind and had little to do with his victory. Uh, but it's a long way off from how he used to feel about him. Take a look. Hmm. I like Mr. Bannon. Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. He's a friend of mine. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. And I like him. Steve had very little to do with our historic victory. He's a good man. Steve is learning that winning isn't as easy as I make it look. He is not a racist. Steve doesn't represent my base. He's only in it for himself. I think the press treats him, frankly, very unfairly. Steve pretends to be at war with the media. He spent his time at the White House leaking false information to the media. Okay. <laughs> I don't know uh -oh. what that is. I'm not sure what that just was. <laughs> but, um... But it's, I guess it's his response yeah. that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Uh, there, there is an alert. Uh, What's the alert? We got? Donald Trump is now threatening Michael Wolff and his publisher over the publication of Fire and Fury. Oh, his deal. attorney just sent an 11-page legal demand uh, letter yeah. that, that Wolff and, and the company cease and desist from any publication oh, of the please. book. First you Amendment. know what? This is what that the... That just sells the man. This is... <laughs> and a complete retraction. Yeah. But that, now, that sells the apology. You know, if he would only sue me, the great gas bag is going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to sue him. Well, he's got to sue him. Keep in mind that he threatens to sue a lot of people, including the women who accused him, yeah. anybody who said right. anything, every journalist he doesn't right. like, everybody who, you know, farts at the wrong time. He's mad. Okay, he's just mad. But you know what, dude? Grow a thicker skin. We'll be right back. just got Matt Lauer's old gig at the Today Show. Good for her. Good for her. And reportedly she'll be making the same salary as co-anchor Savannah Guthrie, which is about 18 million less <laughs> than what Matt made. Oh. Why? Because they all live in Iceland. Because Iceland has a new law that you can't pay women less. They should move the show to Iceland. We move the Today Iceland. Show to Iceland. You know what I predict for that? I think that if they say there's a law that men and women have to make the exact they salary, lower they'll lower the salary. Well, obviously, it's being hmm. sarcastic. No, but it's, I mean, they have that law in Iceland. That's yeah, a true yeah. fact. I mean, my understanding now is that Megan Kelly is the highest paid um, female anchor or female news person at NBC. She's the and highest paid, I think. Period. Highest paid, period, yeah. in the news. And, 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 you know, I'm not begrudging any, anyone their salary, but <laughs> Hoda's been at NBC for 20 years. Um, and so the fact that you have someone that just came in that's making more money you have some uh, your predecessor has just uh, made more money and bottom line is she has saved that show she stepped into yeah. a really difficult situation and, and, and the ratings are higher Hoda, Hoda, Hoda got this job the old-fashioned way she yes, earned it she earned she it earned you know she's job. been in business forever yeah. and yeah. she's a lovely person she's a crackerjack journalist I just and, and it's it, all relative Seven I million dollars I don't I'll take her, it but she's, a lot of she's saving them from a PR you know, crisis right now yeah and the era of like hashtag me too and like your anger was gone because he sexually harassed a bunch of women allegedly enough for, for him to get fired and she's saving them during this PR crisis she's a beloved figure I find it hard-pressed to meet anyone who doesn't like her on television mm -hmm. yeah. so she 
should be paid at least, if not $18 million, then at least 17.9. Yeah, I don't understand. She's not making 18. She's but, making 18 less than Matt was making. Oh, well, yeah. Then, yeah. They, yeah. But and also, it's it's the same as Savannah, probably. Yeah. They don't want to give her more why than Savannah. Savannah get, I mean, so even Maybe they both need a pay bump. Well, that's why I said They don't, right? Listen, guess, nobody's running a telethon for anybody. <laughs> and and they reached out to NBC for a comment. Yeah. But she, said. she told People Magazine that she's not, she's the whole thing, the, I think the whole thing, money thing for me, I really have done jobs I like for the job, but I'm not making my Lauer money, not even close. But she was basically saying, like, that she doesn't necessarily take jobs for money, but I do think sometimes money shows your worth, at least how your it, employer sees you. Let me say what the NBC spokesperson said. Mm -hmm. yep. The network doesn't comment on compensation. No. No. Do, do me a favor, though. Don't get me started on NBC management. Oh, don't start. <laughs> no, don't, start. Don't, don't don't start. Don't yourself in yeah. the foot on yeah. television. When will women make as much as men? I mean, right now, when I guess women we stop make... saying okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, Megan Kelly. It's, say, the, it's but... the same thing. Listen, it's the same thing that it's the same issue that we have with all of these things. Mm -hmm. If we don't stand up and say, listen, this is why you need to pay me more. This is what I bring to the table. Sure. If we don't support each other and say, yeah, this person yeah. is here. If we don't start screaming and saying, we're not standing for it, it's going to continue. And we as women sometimes, at least I've been told before that like, I remember when I was negotiating for a job, not this mm -hmm. one, one a while ago, that I had a boss that was like, but you should be grateful to have this X amount yes. of money. And I was like, so I'm pretty gangster and you're going to pay me what I'm worth or I'm going to walk and you're going to find somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, again, it's probably an easier attitude for me because I have yeah. different kinds of job security, et cetera. But I was recently mentoring someone who was negotiating mm -hmm. a deal mm -hmm. and I was saying, or she was, I wasn't doing the negotiations, I was just giving her advice. And I said, they're always going to lowball you. Like it, women yeah. are always lowball. So your advice and is you I should get more gangster that you should get more gangster about because why would you talk to would, in all i just think that women we have to assert ourselves as well and you may not get it they may put people make right. back and what say no sharing you might as well information ask. with each other i mean that's something I'm happy, i mean that people don't asks. necessarily do um, it's all in those secret contracts it's all in the it's secret all, contracts it's all confidentiality and contract. says you can't share it and but and it's I so crazy why. because someone is sharing it well, people, i read what people make all the time yeah. somebody's talking and people violate their contracts but and, and I love it other people. I think. Who There's a recent story mm -hmm. that an E! New host named Kat Sadler found out oh, she wasn't yes. being paid as much mm -hmm. as her co-host, and mm -hmm. she left the job. Mm -hmm. She said, like, I'm not being paid, so this isn't worth it to oh, me yes, anymore. I, yeah. 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 yeah, so I do think there are situations where she's obviously like, you know what, I I've given you, I think she was there like because 12 years. Because her co-host mm -hmm. was making, she felt she deserved it all. It was Kennedy a male co-host, and I think she was making less than half. Yeah, but I'm but, not, but I'm not sure But where are the women that. in the management who are letting this happen yep. down below? That's what I'm, because there's sometimes you have women higher up in the management, and we don't know what other people are making. You don't know if you're making less than your well, male counterpart. Well, there should be a law about that. They well, should start to put yeah, that into effect. How are they going to enforce that one? Everybody should that know one. what everybody's making. Yeah. No, you, no, especially I don't know. Especially no, no, corporate you, level. No, you're allowed to, you, can have, you have to have privacy <laughs> in how much you make, but, but you'd think that some know. of the women Why? who are high... I, I think in a corporation... Well, what right do you have to know how much I make? But if, but if women share that information with each other, well, yeah. go ahead. then have it makes us all more powerful. Well, no, no, I would prefer my privacy, maybe because I'm at the benefit of having had substantial contracts that I like, but I think that the bigger thing is women who are in management, but does not sharing it make... Gotta go! <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. a discussion this morning about relationships and when is a relationship hitting a rough, rough patch do you know the difference between a rough patch and when it's time to break up oh and do you do people recognize it because apparently folks are you know having a hard time knowing I guess when things are just when it's just a tough time yeah it's hard to know I remember when I was first dating Steve we went to California mm -hmm. on a trip together, and he was so annoying on the trip <laughs> that I said, I'm breaking up with him as soon as I get back. And then on the plane, we had some kind of little sex thing. What? Some kind not, of like, sex not like a major sex thing, but like making out, and I liked him again, and then I stayed with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's my little story. <laughs> Did you join the Mile High Club? No, I didn't do the Mile High Club. No, that's that's no no okay, that's too much for me. She's well, not that agile. Just like just okay? a little fooling around. I'm not. You have to be agile you to do the Mile High Club. You can't go in that bathroom. You can't not get right out of now. it. Yeah, I, I was gonna, I was going to get more involved in the.
this discussion since I've been with my, my husband and I have been together since 1979, but I'm wow. privacy about money, let alone you know, whatever know. Joy wants to talk about. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think, you know, I think my husband has probably found times when it's difficult to live with me. That may really? come as a What's surprise to you. What's the worst thing about you, Greg? I don't close drawers. I, I don't discipline the animals. I don't do the pet, the cats and the dogs. I'm late. I mean... <laughs> That's it. I don't, I don't cook. I'm good at vending machines, carry out, delivery. <laughs> that's that's um, a quality. I mean, oh yeah, all the qualities. Uh, you know, I'm generally good natured, though. I mean, it's not bad. You know, you're pretty even tempered. Pretty even, yeah. pretty even tempered. But uh, you know, there's probably a list. Uh -huh. There's probably a list. I but you know, like, people give up too soon. I feel, I was gonna say I feel like a lot of it is commitment. My uh, Manny and I will be together 20, married 20 years in August, and um, I, yeah, 20 years. And I will say, the first two years of our marriage were really horrible. Really? But yeah, they were really horrible what? because we hadn't lived together. And so I moved out of my place, he moved out of his place, and we lived together for the first time. When we were fighting, I've told this story about toilet paper. He said, I use too much toilet yeah. paper. I was like, screw you. I don't care about the toilet paper. He was like, you got to buy the toilet paper all the time. It was just like all these crazy things. And I constantly was like, I think I made a mistake. Oh, my God, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Yeah. And the advice that we got from our families was just write it out write it out you made this commitment you made us all come to that wedding and you know write it out and then it got better my mother used to my father was a gambler a compulsive gambler mm. and she would say I, I, i'm saying this it sounds terrible she'd say i wish it would hit me like she needed a reason to leave, to leave. Him. Yeah. of course he was never yeah. going to touch her he was going to hit her he was not that kind of person but because he was a gambler she did not in that generation it, it didn't even matter like they yeah. could what was the worst thing they could do? Yeah. Hit you, yeah. of course. Yeah. And once yeah. they hit you, you're out Physical, of there. That's my advice. Abuse. But and gambling is not to make you nervous since you're the newlywed. I was newly say, you just got married. I've been married uh, like a month and a week. Yeah. So, <laughs> what it, would be a deal breaker for you? Yeah, what's a deal breaker? Cheating. I, I don't think oh, I could. I'm very like territorial, and I don't think I could get over the trust thing. But I will say that any time that we're fighting or like having a rough patch, whiskey and a night in and cooking will really solve a lot of problems. Sure. At least for me. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> just we can take moments because it's so easy with technology. Just reconnect. Just have a moment where you're like having a date night. I prefer like in our house because I like to cook but I think that it's really tough out there and social media makes it so much worse and then you're your best friend yeah, I did. I, yeah. yeah. what's yeah. your yeah. deal breaker Whoopi uh, my deal breaker <laughs> probably is I don't want to be married I don't want to yeah. do this. this is the truth I don't I never wanted to be married but and, you I, did it. and I kept doing it because yeah. I thought <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to do yeah. yeah but it's not for me I don't right. like it I don't want somebody in my space I don't mm -hmm. care what you think I don't want you asking me about the questions the why I'm doing this and why I'm doing that I yeah. earn my way so yeah. your deal breaker so is he's breathing it, <laughs> basically we'll be right back <laughs> It is up to all of us to continue the conversation. This is a cultural revolution. That's my opening statement if I'm a prosecutor. Boom, case made. I'm sick of it. She's sick of it! So grab your phone and join the conversation. I'd love to see that. Boom. And don't miss The View on ABC. Millions of Americans are obsessed with this new app, HQ, which is a trivia game that gives out cash prizes. And here's one winner who's going viral because she just sort of flipped out when she won. <laughs> and she caught the eye of the folks who created HQ. Take a look. I get it. What did you say? In 2018, you chose. So what I want to tell you about, now she won $11. Yeah. I'm sorry, $11 and 30 cents. Um, and one of our, our uh, folks here, the lady that uh, looks after us, Molly. Molly. Also won $11. Yes. <laughs> Shout and out to Molly. Everybody was quite... You know, energized. Now, are people getting energized about this because it's something that you're doing as a group? Is it something that you're doing with other people? Is that what it is? It's on. part of it. I'm slightly addicted to it as well. I play it twice a day, sometimes three times a day when there's an extra game. Um, you know, it's, it's like... 
First of all, you get bragging rights if you win. I have never won. I've only gotten to the eighth question. There are 12 questions, and you answer each question in 10 seconds. Um, but you're playing with everyone across the the world. The world, right? And if you win, your your name goes across the screen with the amount of money that you won. And so you can take a screenshot, and then there's bragging rights. So a lot of people win. No. It's well, usually like 30 people. It starts out with like over 500,000 people Okay, playing. now I'm going to just and now you're see, look for your name now all the time. I'm Sonny the Wiz. Right, Sonny the Wiz. <laughs> Sonny the Wiz, not yet. Not that, yet. That could sound, you know, you get bad hearing. So, that Sonny could the sound Wiz? like Sonny the Witch. Uh, oh, my son, my son's hooked that name up. <laughs> I don't like your, it. Your son calls you <laughs> Sonny the Wiz. Sonny he signed the me up for it. But it's, it really is. It's like it's trivia. Who doesn't love trivia? Like you feel... Smart doing it. I'm gonna I don't get out. know. I, you got to do I it. Wonder, I wonder. So it's like Jeopardy. It's but, just like Jeopardy, uh, and you can actually win money. You can't cash in unless you win twenty bucks. Um, oh, so at she least. didn't even get the money. This no, <laughs> no, no. She didn't even get the money. Oh my well, God! It's amazing, and the and the host the, the host that does it, um, Scott, is amazing at it. We should have him on the show. He should be a guest host. Yes. Come on. Go. Go. The show yeah, I, I, you know, I don't have anything to do with who's on the show. Obviously, right? Yeah, Obviously. Clear, clearly. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>